Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Acres. I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. We were going to shoot this outdoors, but... Well, the wind is gusting, and it'll be fine, and you'll just kind of get things ready to go, and then all of a sudden, it sounds like there's a train driving through the yard, and we're just like, um, no, we're going to go hide in the house. <laughs> I had to go into the post office today, and we'll talk more about that. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. Uh, we've been seeing a bunch of people doing let's catch you up on what's going on around the place, sort of a sit downs and stuff. And it totally makes sense at this time of year. There's so many things that, I mean, do you really want to watch me sitting there filing something? I don't think so. So I did a casting session the other day. Henry got up and got all the stuff set, and then we ran through it. We mentioned the fact that we had a problem with the... Uh, uh, one of the furnaces, but we survived, <laughs> and most of the pieces turned out fine. They've all been cut off. Uh, they've all had preliminary polish done on them, and I'm in the process now. Today I drilled a million holes because all the pendants and stuff need a hole drilled in the top of them and things like that. Spent hours drilling holes, polishing things, tumbling stuff. There's stuff right now down in the studio running in the tumblers. Yeah, doing all the final fine work yeah yeah D doing quality assurance you know really looking stuff at stuff and under a bright light to make sure there's nothing that's going to make me go uh no i shouldn't sell that later <laughs> so getting that up my goal this week crossing fingers and toes is to try and finish multiple custom orders and one of the things i've been doing for the past couple of days is i've been using a 3d printer to make some wax models for irene to further modify. Right. So this is really a way to take some of the drudgery out of repetitive patterns that really have, I don't want to say no artistic value. They, they, have, just, no, they have very little artistic value. They're simple geometry. And they're really what was done during the time frame that Irene's trying to recreate. Right. I have a custom order where somebody wanted the Greek key design that's is, that's the kind that has that kind of going in and out. And yeah, yeah. Looks looks and really cool. It's very cool, but my initial thought was seriously, um, I don't see it used much on jewelry. I usually see it mo used mostly on clothing because that makes sense. It's a pattern that's easily reproduced in textiles but not so easily reproduced when you have to carve it. You do see it on pottery. I'm sure there's pieces out there that have it on metal and stuff like that, but you don't see it super commonly because it's really complicated to carve it. And that's what it had to be done in the olden days, is you had to carve it at some point. Well, even today, that's the alternative, right. which, which is a lot of time. It's not, it's not impossible. Irene's perfectly capable of doing it, but... Not while hours. trying to complete three other custom orders in the but same week. <laughs> the, the hours that are required to do that are... Ridiculous. More than she wants to spend. So one of the things that happens with her business is she gets orders every single day that come in, and they have to be shipped within a certain amount of time. Right. So today I went to the post office. Mm-hmm. You know, every once in a while, you run into a bureaucratic problem. Today was a doozy. I'll let Irene explain more about that later. Well, bureaucracy. Right. And I had spent, previously, I had spent like an hour on a chat with a shipping company trying to negotiate my way around the bureaucracy. And it can't be done, apparently. Well, when I went into town, I spoke to the postmaster. Irene said, here's the specific problem we're having. Mm -hmm. And it's one that is maddening. Yeah. If you don't have a deliverable address, meaning you don't have a street address that the post office recognizes, you can't be verified by a lot of shipping companies. So mm -hmm. that's a problem. And the shipping company that Irene was trying to use, which has a lot of big advantages for her business, yeah. would not accept the fact that all we have is a post office box. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with the postmaster, and he said, well, the real problem here is that 
there is no uh, no address anywhere in Ash Fork that is deliverable. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, including the post office? He says, including the post office. Now, you might be scratching your head like I am saying, well, how do you get the mail here if you don't know the address for the post office? But there's trucks that go back and forth, and I guess the drivers know where they're going, so that all works out. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a new post office that's going to be put in. We outgrew this post office. Well, it was, it was outgrown before we got here. Yeah, because when we, when we uh, got first got here, there was a waiting list to get a, a post box, and there was another lady in town who ran a post box service. She had a whole stack of boxes in her place, and you could rent a spot from her because there were no post office boxes left in the post office. And then they filled every square inch that was left and renovated the place to create more post boxes. But they are just, they're totally full. Yeah, they took all the counters out and lined the walls with the post office boxes that have a metal mechanism that allows the boxes to swing around so they can put the mail in from the back. Right. Because there's no way to get behind the post office box to fill them up. Right. And the ones on the inside, it's all stuffed in from the back, but not on the outside of the building. So, yeah, we've needed a new post office here forever. And unfortunately, the previous postmaster had the opportunity and was too lazy. Yeah, he just didn't want to bother. It was too much work. And he yeah, was he was going to retire anyway, so what does it matter? And I'm like, how about thinking about somebody besides yourself? Well, <laughs> you're asking an awful lot. I know, I know. So, I went by the new post office site. Well, what's going to be the new post office site? <laughs> I had to come into town this afternoon to mail off some packages for Irene's business. So I figured I'd come down here to the other end of town, which is a whole whopping half mile away, and show you where the new Ash Fork Post Office is going to be built. They've been busy putting in the septic and water, and then presumably sometime this summer they'll start construction of the new post office. The old post office has no parking. Unfortunately, getting a new post office won't change the problem we have with no deliverable mail besides P.O. boxes in Ash Fork. That creates all manner of problems. Today, it created a problem for Irene doing some shipping because the shipping company didn't want to accept a from address where we actually live because it doesn't resolve in the U.S. Postal Service's address list. I just spoke with the postmaster at some length and there's nothing he can do about it. There's no delivery locations, no endpoints in Ash Fork. One more thing that you need to be concerned about if you're going to move into rural America. You might want to check to see if there's any kind of mail delivery because without it, your addresses won't resolve, which means you're going to have some problems sometimes with some suppliers, some vendors, and some customers. We know where it's supposed to be, and we were excited to hear that there, because one of the problems at the current post office facility is you have to park on the street. There's no parking. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no parking except for a couple of spots in the back where the employees can park and where the mail truck pulls in. But there's no parking that's, you know, and sometimes during busy times, Oh, good luck. You either wind up walking blocks or, and, and it's, you're taking your life in your hands because all, those, all these idiots who can't park and they're running around and they're not paying attention. And uh, Yes. So they'll be able to do that in a parking lot instead when the new post office is built. But hopefully... It'll, it, it's going to be when it's going to be. Now, yeah. the other thing that I did today was I took the box truck into a friend's repair shop because... I don't have the equipment to evacuate an air conditioning system. It's relatively expensive. You don't need it very often. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't make any sense for me to have that piece of equipment no. here on the homestead. Because not only do I need that equipment, but I also need to have some kind of a deal with somebody who's going to reprocess that for you and reclaim it. Right. So it's kind of like the, the gas stations and the, and the shops will have deals to... Holloway used transmission fluid and used oil and all those other kind of things. 
because it's against the law to dump it on the ground. That's one of the few things it's against the law to do in Arizona is dump things on the ground. <laughs> so you don't want to be letting the these uh, fluorocarbons in the atmosphere, that's Freon and a bunch of other things, because it does bad things to the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. So I took it in and uh, Dan's going to be looking at it. We went over the schematic. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he that... bought the schematics this weekend, mm -hmm. which is something yeah. we had not had before. Yeah, I found somebody who is actually a competent medium duty truck mechanic. He works on this kind of truck all the time. That's his day job. Since I was talking to him on the weekend, that's he his spent night some job. Time. That's, his, weekend time. that's his weekend job. It's, side, it's his side gig. <laughs> so he's not familiar with this specific truck, but he knew what the issues were. And he said, well, it's one of three things. So I checked the drain hole for the evaporator, and it was free, so any condensation can run out. That leaves the evaporator itself. And then three switches. So I went in and talked with Dan and said, okay, we replaced this particular unit a year ago. We didn't replace any of the switches. If it looks like any of these are bad, let's replace them all. Yeah, we, can, we cannot go without, we, without air, air conditioning. We did that last year. It was miserable. And it was miserable. Uh, the trip to California for the next event... Um, we go through one of the hottest areas of the state. We drive through Yuma. Now, if you watch Sandy over at Suburban Homestead, Wyoming, and Arizona. Mm -hmm. She bails she, out. Yes, yeah, she left. Year. She's already back in Wyoming because it gets too hot. Yeah, well, Yuma. it's not uncommon. When we start, when we're coming back, we're, we're in San Diego County, and it's not uncommon for it to be 50s, 60s in the morning there because it's close enough to the ocean with the, where you get the marine stuff coming in. And so it could be that temperature. It might even be as high as 70. Ooh. And you get to Yuma and it's 110. It, it's pretty warm. <laughs> and that's happened to us multiple times. And it's fine if the air conditioner is running. But if the air conditioner is not running, you can't get out of there fast enough. You, and you have to stop in Yuma for, for, for fuel and stuff like that. Well, it's dark outside. It's time to wrap this up and get on with some other things. I have some dinner in the oven. It should be ready in about 45 minutes. And I have other things I need to get done, including getting a car secured against some potential rain. So we're going to talk with you later. Thanks for, very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications because... We're going to be doing tons more stuff. We've, uh, like I said, I'm, I've got to go down to the studio again. I've got stuff cooking down there. And I've got seed trays ready to plant in the greenhouse that are all watered, uh, that have been moistened. I, try, I like to moisten them ahead of time, just in case the soil is a little dry. The seedlings there are ready to be transplanted. I got most of the irrigation set up this morning in the greenhouse. Because I got the valves verified yesterday. Yep. So I've got most of the, the lines. I need a couple more lines and a couple more emitters, and I'll be done in that with that part of it. Plug your ears. <laughs> I have to go buy some more parts. <laughs> I heard that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, well, you should ask me. Well, you'll have to tell me what the parts are because I have some of the, I have the, all the parts that I need, so I might have some of the parts you need too. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the connection. I, okay. I've used up everything I had. So okay. we'll talk with you sometime <laughs> later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Keep brainstorming. Yeah, obviously we are. <laughs> you have to be careful. It might be that lightning striking. I see. <laughs>